Good day, my name is James Evans Bomer, director of the Planetary Resistance, and today we're going to do the real matrix, which is like a 101. Of course, uh, anyone that's familiar with resistance understands the level of the content, of the information that we're actually putting out now and bringing to this dimension exactly what's been going on for possibly the past 60 billion years. So the result of that is, is when people are watching our new videos, sometimes they're a little behind in what exactly we're talking about. In addition to that, because there's pockets of resistance sprouting up around the globe, it's important that those that find themselves as developers of those resistance also are telling people the correct information. Because one of our major things at the resistance is, is we cipher all of the information that is in the occult world and we use a system that allows us to be able to determine whether it's authentic, partly authentic, or completely fabricated. So, what we're dealing with here today is we're going to explain the real matrix. We're going to explain to everyone what exactly a matrix is. In order to do that, you must first have the definition of matrix. Or a matrix. A matrix is a womb or a place where things are cultivated. That, I believe, is uh, the Strong's Dictionary definition. And so, what we're really dealing with as a womb is basically just like your mother's womb because everything on this dimension exists in fractals, so I'll explain this. So inside your mother's womb, you have a nine-month gestation. And so, when you have this nine months, generally, not in all cases, but generally, the child comes forth, or the mother births the child. So, the reason why the child is birthed is because it's actually gotten developed to a certain stage where it can no longer live in the womb. So, if you want to ask whether or not Earth is a womb, you can say yes. And... There is also a gestation cycle for this womb, Earth. So, just like when you're in your mother's womb, what will happen is, is that you'll get to a level where you get too big and then you must come out. If anyone is just asking right off the bat, how do I get out of a matrix? You get your soul big enough to where you're released from this matrix into what they call the construct or a place of endless ability. So, what you're literally dealing with here in Earth is more or less a training cycle. And so, of course, just as in your mother's womb, much of those training cycles begin in darkness. So the reason why there's so much darkness in the occult nature of history of this particular planetary system is because it's just recently coming out of its incubation phase. In addition to that, we must understand that if, when the, when the planet gets itself to another level, when the planet actually awakes its kundalini, then all subsequent species on the planet will also awaken their kundalini. That is the common theory. Although a person can also awaken their kundalini on their own. So understand, the mission, as we call it, is still twofold, which is one, to ascend yourself and to get yourself on an ascendant level, and then two, assist your brothers and sister with, sisters with also getting them into ascension. And so, what we're dealing with here in this matrix or this womb, there's a way that this operates. There's a way that this particular reality that we're in, this matrix, operates. And so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about matrix OS. The matrix operating system and how it is that this whole system is put together. Because the common ignorance of society, mainly due to Christianity, has people believing that the God science itself is something uh, that is so mystical and so unknown. But in all reality, we've come to discover that the knowledge behind many things that we're using today in society is, is exactly the same knowledge that is being used to construct this reality. So, and this brings to mind the Allison, uh, not so much not the Alice in Wonderland, but the Wizard of Oz, where when they go and see the wizard, behind the curtain of this being that is pretending to be is simply an old man operating certain types of equipment. Now, of course, the equipment was made to look very advanced and understand the time in which the Wizard of Oz was shot. 
that equipment was advanced. So Matrix OS is based on a system used by those who are practicing what can be called draconian knowledge or dragon knowledge. Because in China, I, which we spell this way also, I means dragon. And because the Chinese language is much more antique, Mandarin is much more antique than English language, right off the bat you can understand that this I means what it means in Chinese before it means what it means in English. In addition to that, Qi, which also forms the root of Chinese, is another kind of dragon. And this is why in their studies, when they talk about the chi energy, they talk about it as a dragon force, an electric energy. Because to the, the indigenous, what they did was they zoomorphied all the energies that they found to exist here. And with electric energy, electric energy is related to the surface. As you see, this word has multiple meanings. And that's also what we contributed to this particular dimension is in the book, The Code of the Matrix, which I wrote and is available on the site for free, you will discover the way not only to understand what exactly is going on in the world, but also exactly how to pull apart the language so you can confirm the story for yourself. Not trusting in what I'm saying or what anyone else is saying, but being able to cipher the language because in the language is the story of everything that's happened here. So, furthermore, how you know that this I means dragon is this is the actual symbol. The I inside of the Visica is actually the symbol for intercontinental hotel. And the most interesting thing is all Chinese diplomats when going into any city with the intercontinental always stay in this hotel. And it's highly possible that all these hotels are built on top of ley lines for the purpose of being able to stay in the portal of protection. And we'll explain that really briefly, the portal protection, because many people are now familiar with the term Inception. A movie that has come out just recently, and there's a few other movies that have been shot in the past that are very similar to this particular movie. But... What an inception really is, is that you have to understand that individuals' minds, such as Kim Jong of Korea, are, is carrying certain information that would be very valuable to other factions, whether it be Russia, whether it be any place. So, in order to protect his mind from being incepted, or for just a, a person with simple psychic abilities tapping into his mind and repeating what they see, there has to be a defense. A psychic firewall. And the interesting part about all this is because the Chinese who are supreme in nanotechnology are practicing first a system that is based on a system that we use every single day and we call it chess. And I don't think I have enough cubes available here. But basically, a chess board is 8 by 8. 8 by 8. That's a chess board. So, okay. So, and I'm going to move out of the camera a little bit here so that we can just get the information out and on this board so you can see what we're really dealing with. So, what an 8 by 8 I Ching is, they call it 64, because 8 times 8 is 64. So, the I Ching is 64, and some have different, uh, some have different terms for what they call it from there, but we'll just call it hexagrams. 
And the interesting part about it is because how we visualize things, we are looking in 2D, but most shapes always remain 3D and must be visualized as such in order for you to get the full construct. So what's most interesting about this number 64 is if you notice how data moves, even in computers, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, what you're literally looking at is you're looking at also the memory systems of a computer. And this language, for better lack of words, this algorithm, is being used to actually create the reality. So the reality in itself is something of a moving Rubik's Cube. That as it tumbles and as it turns, one continues to experience different realities, different possibilities. And when you come to the end of that reality, or all those possibilities, then your mind starts to think. Okay, so we'll move forward. So before we were discussing I Ching, also called the law of changes, and how the Chinese culture has always been very familiar with this system. So, when you want to understand how matrices are constructed, this would be the construct. This is the actual frame. So, what we were talking about is matrix OS. And we'll first talk about this system of nine, very briefly. People ask the, about the perfection of the number nine. And they understand after a while that obviously this particular planetary system where we understand this number as such would be the linchpin to many things because every way you add and multiply 9, it becomes a derivative of itself. And everyone's pretty much familiar with this. Okay, so this goes on ad infinitum. So, this system of nine, it's very interesting because when you go back in history, you find individuals by the name of Ninus, and you find actual cities, only a few though, that are named with nine. And this is, of course, Ninus and Ninevich, which is a city that was in Chaldea. So, what we want to talk about is we want to talk about exactly how to get into fully understanding what's going on in this matrix. And the first thing is, is how is the matrix being controlled? How is it working? So the first thing you have is you have the moon. Most are now more familiar with this symbol. So you have the moon. And the moon it makes a certain level of radiation. And this radiation comes from amplification of the light that goes from the sun. The sun is powering more things than just this planet. And so when the photons come from the sun and then hit the moon, they in turn reflect to us. So this is the upload every day that comes in. And because Earth is majority, is majority water, but not just any kind of water, salt water, the interesting part is salt water itself is not a good conductor, but when you add salt to water, it's a very good conductor. So there is an ancient legend that all the actual water that was here on Earth before was actually fresh. And there was a meteor impact that actually changed actually changed the, the actual salinity of the water. In addition to this number of these number systems of I Ching, what many people would be surprised to find out is that 
groups like the Order of Melchizedek are actually using these numbers to also create realities. And what they talk about in their deeper books is that they started to run out of realities. They started to run out of space for more realities. And the interesting part about it is, is that when you really look at how the world operates, you can check out your computer also and see that many times you begin to run out of space. When you collect too many sites, too many memories, too many videos, too many things you like, you start to run out of space. And so there's no other place to get space than outer space. And so this also becomes the reason why we feel now as a species that we must branch out into more space because we need more experience and we want to store that experience. And it, what you'll find is, is that these cubes store experiences. And they're in different shapes. And we've become, we've gone to term these now arcs. An arc carries information about planetary systems, different types of data. And so always there's a quest for a lost arc. Because for many individuals, they are stuck on a lot of the information they're receiving, especially if they're going through religion, pantheisms, etc., because it's it very confusing as knowledge is continuously passed on, omitted and changed in order to benefit this particular species that it has uh, been written for, or as we always say, the political agenda of the king. So, we wanted to talk about now the grid system that exists here on Earth. Apparently, Earth may be at one point had a perfect grid system. But now, the, the grid on Earth is in various shapes. And in each of these points, which are the intersection of what's called ley lines, you will find some type of religious structure, commemorary, stru commemorary structure, graveyard, temple, tomb, pyramid, etc. And the reason this is, is because these particular structures not only serve as waypoints or anchors as it's called because when you're astral traveling you have to know where you're going to where you're going back to there's a lot more than astro to astral travel than hey poof I want to astral travel so these temples these structures not only serve as waypoints but they also emit frequencies frequencies that change everyone that are in the vicinity of these places to the ideology of whatever it's emitting. So, if a church, for instance, is on top of a ley line, it's going to be very prominent in the area for everyone simply to be Christian. Likewise, if a mosque is on top of a ley line and the symbology behind that is being used, then it's going to be majority people in that area practicing under those sigils. Now, the deepest part about our reality is, is that there has been a lot of truth that is yet to be revealed. And one of those major truths is the actual source of the knowledge coming from the two top belief systems in this world. And where these symbols come from and what they correspond to, which we'll get into a little bit later on in the program. So, these waypoints on Earth, these ley lines, also redundify within the human body. That the human body, which has also been taken apart very heavily by the Chinese, when it comes to acupuncture, is filled with various points that are also like these points. And they serve to control the human body. Many people are familiar with the main system of power system of the human body, which is called chakra. And these chakras not only correspond to our organs, but they also correspond to many different parts 
of, uh, of our body and even the planets. There's a chakra for each planet. So when they say we're all connected, what they're telling you is, is that your body has a ley line grid system going on in it also. That redundifies here on the earth. We have organs inside of this body that also correspond to the planetary systems. So if a person or being wants to control the mind, they simply go to the chakra center on earth that corresponds to the mind. They place their sigil or whatever their symbol is on it and it begins to control the minds of the individuals that are in that vicinity. So there's something else also going on here which is because there's a knowledge that's coming out now about a lot of this. Some of it's not is intact, but people are learning. It's known that here on earth that many of the beings are trapped inside of a net. We call that the planned net or the planet. However, not all beings are trapped in this net. They are simply trapped in the galaxy. And many people are familiar with our planetary system. And this is why there is always talk in mythology of the other planets and what they're up to. But when you start to really research it, you find that it seems to be one big club. What you'll later on begin to realize is that this, what you're being made aware of, which is what planets you're being made aware of, are not all the planets that exist. It's just the gods that have chosen to incept man's mind. Now, and one. The interesting part about this is, is that we will explain very briefly that in this system, up here, as you get more and more people down here, this is if you go to your mother's mother, your mother's mother, your mother's mother, as you go up, you'll start having less people. Okay? When you get to the top, you'll have almost, you'll have one archetype, an individual or a titan or a giant or a god or whatever name you want to give it, that is actually the totality of all the beings that will be brought forth from there. So what this literally means is that whatever is up here it is actually family because of this connection that we all have. And so this starts to shift the mind to what is the real agenda here and what is to take place here on earth. One of the main things that we need to understand is that we have some things to contribute. Some people need to be taught. Some people have been bringing knowledge that's not correct and even those people will begin to admit that they've been incorrect. But now is the time for us to realize exactly what's going on since all the knowledge is now here. It's also important that we let the individuals that have that knowledge start to explain it so that everyone can get on the same page. Because ascension itself is something that takes a lot of effort. It's not easy to ascend. Anyone that says it is, is lying. Ascension, there's two states you can be in. You can be lazy, which only requires you to actually sit on the couch all day and do nothing. If you want to be intelligent, smart, and active, you must activate. What activation is, is it's about powering up your chakra centers so that you start to become more perceptive of what's going on in this reality because there's many things that you're not seeing. Part of that is because looking through two eyes, you'll always see things dual. Our body is actually split in half. Even when a woman gets pregnant, you'll notice a split down the middle of our stomach. There's a bridge in the middle of our brain called the corpus callosum, and this bridge is not firing off. 
And this is why they say that you must build a bridge in order to get to the other side, because they're talking about the other side of your brain. When the other side of your brain turns on, you become all-knowing of all your existences, because there is a you that exists on every single planet. And at times when you're in your dream state, you will go to those worlds and live as that individual. But oftentimes, if you ever have an opportunity to grab a mirror, you'll see that you don't appear as you appear at times in this dimension. So, activating requires you to move around. It requires you to put some effort into it. So, that's what you're in the face of. And the rewards are great. So, going forward, now that you've discovered the ley line system that exists here on Earth, I will explain to you how they program this ley line system. Now, deep inside of this ley line system, as this is the surface of the meridians of the body Earth, as we have the surface of the meridians of our body, there are the deeper versions of it that are called chakras. Earth also has its chakras. And it's known that these ch chakras, when you're in front of the actual ones here on Earth, the physical ones, which are more in the center of the Earth, they look like crystals. So many of the crystals here on Earth, not the meteors, but the crystals, correspond to different parts of our chakra centers and meridians. Because also remember, there's not just seven chakras. There's not just nine. Some say they saw... In increments of these numbers, the, the actual numbers of the, the 4, the 8, the, the 16, the 32, the 64, they saw these points of light continuing to, continuing to multiply until the person got to an infinite level. So what, what I'm saying here is, is that there's more than just this amount of chakras, but we understand that these are the ones that are major, and then from that, it gets more fine-tuned, more fine-tuned, more fractalized, etc. And so on these major chakra points where these crystals are, these crystals are very susceptible to a few types of energies. One of those en energies is photon energy. Crystals are very receptive to photon energy. Now, understand that inside the human being's mind, in the pineal gland, is a crystal. This is also what the real meaning of being Christ was, is to become crystal or pure. And so inside of the pineal gland, what you have is you have a crystal that's also affected by these photons. And what generally happens is, is that as the photons are continuously being produced, from our sun. That sun is radiating those photons onto our planetary body. And so our crystals are being affected by the sun's photons. Now many say that the moon in our galaxy is in between us and these photons and it serves as a hack to what we're actually perceptive of versus what's going on. And I'll explain this in detail. The hack that's already been done to this dimension was internal and external to the species that exists here called human. How this was done is internally, you have an R complex in the brain. R complex. This is the reptilian portion of the brain. Because if the brain is divided into quadrants, there's a mammalian portion, and there is even in the area where the pineal and the hippocampus is a bird brain. So you can fly away. So what this is about is in this R complex, this was an insertion into the current species of human. I mean the human is a body 
that's constantly being upgraded the same way that we're doing a lot of cloning and things, but think the Syrians and their technology, trading RNA and DNA that's resilient or that's activated into 13 columns, doing things like uh, mono uh, making monatomics out of the meteorites to see what the, the result of that, that will be, uh, creating planet-sized ships and then uh, selling them to other systems as warships, etc. So, in the R complex part of the brain, there's a fight or flight syndrome, which we don't get into, we won't get into right now, but we'll just say that there was an internal to the body, or we'll just call this external because there's even a deeper hack. But this external hack was the R complex in the human body. Bam, the brain. And so many already know in the ancient text it says that with the serpent race, as we talked about this being a draconian control system, this, they gave us their minds. And the little, the little part, not all of our minds, they gave us their minds because they knew their fears would eventually overcome us. But that's not happening. So, what we're dealing with is this draconian level and system is activating a certain part of the brain. This in turn is causing you to perceive things as such and they actually control the moon. Because the moon is a hollow satellite. This is now redundantly proven that the moon, when core drillings came back, it was very difficult to drill into because of the substance it's made out of, but when the core drillings came back, it was found, found to be hollow. In addition to that, as David Icke has revealed continuously, it's a base because we can't see the other side, the size of it causing a perfect eclipse, etc., etc. So this is none of the draconian Syrian hacks. Stand in between them and the sun. And there are several things that do this. And that's called Luciferian. So, when the, the moon is receiving these frequencies, it in turn translates certain things and changes it when it receives, uh, when, when Earth receives it. And this changes the attitude and behavior of not only the species, all species that live here on Earth, not just the humans getting crazy during the full moon. And as we continuously get stronger into this cycle, the phase of the full moons will be stronger. So it's important to learn how to channel that energy the proper way so that you can get to a level that your energy is not being vamped or what we call you don't become moon food. You get a chance to keep your energy for manifestation so when you're in the moons in its waning cycle, you're able to see clarity and, and manifestation in the things that you're getting involved with in life. And so, what this control system is about is because our body is 70% water, all of these photons and radiation that emit off the moon are actually affecting us and keeping us in a wavelength or vibratory frequency of perception that is very limited. This is what we will call a matrix. So what you'll find outside of the matrix is you'll find a construct that's unlimited, meaning that anything you can think will actually manifest. And at night, you're getting always really good training at how to do that because when you're dreaming, you're in another world and you feel as if you're operating that world, and many times you are, for those that have experienced lucid sleep or time lords, then you're actually controlling the whole reality. So to understand it, where there, what's outside of this construct is space that can be programmed by you and you can also do that collectively. So those who have ideas of what a better environment will be like, learning such systems and guidelines because they're based on a lot of universal laws. And we'll talk about those universal laws. So we talked about the external hack being the addition of the R complex into the cranial structure or the brain of the human body. 
The, inter and the internal hack is obviously the splice that's often talked about in the DNA. And this splice being um, somewhere in the, thir the 33rd chromosome that there's an insertion into the DNA. And many people are not aware that your DNA changes your actual auric structure, or what people like to call the spirit. And so, if there's a splice into the DNA, then the person's spiritual being will be affected. And this is why I also believe that that is controlling the wavelength that we're perceptive of. So spiritually and physically, from the way we see things, it's being hacked, for better lack of words. Lastly, what I would like to talk about is I would like to talk about energy and money, time. And the reason this becomes so important is because it lets you know exactly what's the linchpin here. How are things moving? How are things becoming accomplished? What's uh, one of the things that they're looking for the most, etc. And so, what you have here on this planetary system is you have everything existing in energy. And so because everything is energy, the only way, or the, actually the most precious resource that could come from a human being is their energy or their essence. And so on this dimension, energy is now converted into money. And how this happens is, is that time equals money. What keeps, what keeps people moving around and going and doing things and working for places and hustling or whatever they do is that they need money. So they're willing to put their time and energy into getting money. Time and energy to equal money. And so this gives money a great deal of power here on this dimension. In fact, there are many people that are very aware of certain things that are going on in the dimension and they have brilliant ideas to implement to get the situation, uh, get us into a better situation. However, their money is being affected. So, how money works is money is not power. Money itself is current circulation. That's why it's called currency. And currency ultimately transfers itself into, the current actually transfers itself into the energy. It becomes power. And so this circulation that's going on around our planetary globe with the money, as money circulates about the planetary globe, energy is moving around the planetary globe, goal, and time. So we have now identified that the external hack is actually within the R complex portion of the human brain. The internal hack, which affects the spirit or the aura, comes in the DNA. Because as many people know, there is a, a splice within our DNA at a certain point in the chromosome that what many don't know affect our auric field and affect our spiritual field of perception. And so this internal hack is the finishing off because things have to be done internally and externally of how we perceive things. Lastly, before we close off this short series of the Real Matrix 101, is this. We would just like to talk about energy because it has come to the minds of everyone at this point that everything is energy. I have to forgive my spelling at times from ciphering so many words you don't even see the vowels anymore, you just see the letters. And we'll get into that later on. But the energy here on this dimension has been turned into money. And this is why money is given a term like currency. Which is, of course, the root word for current. 
Current means many things. Current means on time. Current means a, a wave of power. And so, because money is energy, this is because money has made itself equal to a person's time and energy. What people generally do every day is they have to find some way to make money so that they can continue to live on this dimension. And the lifestyle in which they choose to live or sometimes the lifestyle in which they, only, they can only live. And so because of this, the money equals time and equals energy. And so everyone's energy or most people's energy is focused into their money. And this is what was talked about. Uh, there's certain parts of the Bible that, that uh, come to play in here. And everyone knows exactly how I feel about the Bible is the book being a book of riddles. And for the depth, they can understand what's being written. But for the novice, they're taking everything literally and thus they don't get the correct understanding. There's something that's referred to as the mark of the beast in the book of the Bible. And it gives a number 666. And it just so happens that this, because this word itself has been demonized so much, most imagine that the beast itself is a large demonic monster that eats everything, which is really close to the truth. But when you take things literal, it's hard to extract that truth. So the truth is, is that the mark of the beast means the mark of materialism because the beast was only signified as materialism. The beast was a material life form, just like an animal was material or grounded to the earth. And the mark is simply a sign. That's what mark mean, meant to them, a sign. So the ultimate side of materialism on this dimension is money. And because of the way money is constructed as a talisman with sigils and things of that nature, it just so happens that especially with an American currency, the 666 can be found within the currency itself from a symbolic standpoint. And so that's what we wanted to do today. We wanted to talk about the real matrix, just a simple one-on-one. We have a book that's going to be following this up so that it includes a lot more details about what's really happening, how it's all put together, who's involved, what symbols are being used, etc., etc. And hopefully this is enough, however, in what's being published now to get people more in the know about what exactly is taking place on this dimension, the stage where it can no longer live in the womb. So, if you want to ask whether or not Earth is a womb, you can say yes. And, there is also a gestation cycle for this womb, Earth. So, just like when you're in your mother's womb, what will happen is, is that you'll get to a level where you get too big and then you must come out. If anyone is just asking right off the bat, how do I get out of a matrix? You get your soul big enough to where you're released from this matrix into what they call a construct or a place of endless ability. So, what you're literally dealing with here in Earth is more or less a training cycle. And so, of course, just as in your mother's womb, much of those training cycles begin in darkness. So the reason why they're so much fabricated so, what we're dealing with here today is we're going to explain the real matrix. We're going to explain to everyone what exactly a matrix is. In order to do that, you must first have the definition of matrix or a matrix. A matrix is a womb or a place where things are cultivated. That, I believe, is uh, the Strong's Dictionary definition. And so what we're really dealing with as a womb is basically just like your mother's womb because everything on this dimension exists in fractals. So I'll explain this. So inside your mother's womb you have a nine month gestation. And so when you have this nine months generally, not in all cases, but generally the child comes forth or the mother births the child. 
So the reason why the child is burst is because it's actually gotten developed to a certain Good day, my name is James Evans Bomer, Director of the Planetary Resistance, and today we're going to do the real matrix, which is like a 101. Of course, uh, anyone that's familiar with resistance understands the level of the content, the information that we're actually putting out now and bringing to this dimension exactly what's been going on for possibly the past 60 billion years. So the result of that is, is when people are watching our new video, sometimes they're a little behind in what exactly we're talking about. In addition to that, because there's pockets of resistance sprouting up around the globe, it's important that those that find themselves as developers of those resistance also are telling people the correct information. Because one of our major things at the resistance is, is we cipher all of the information that is in the occult world and we use a system that allows us to be able to determine whether it's authentic, partly authentic, or completely fake. Matrix operating system and how it is that this whole system is put together. Because the common ignorance of society mainly due to Christianity, has people believing that the God science itself is something uh, that is so mystical and so unknown. But in all reality, we've come to discover that the knowledge behind many things that we're using today in society is, is exactly the same knowledge that is being used to construct this reality. So, and this brings to mind the Allison, uh, not so much not the Allison Wonderland, but the Wizard of Oz, where when they go and see the wizard, behind the curtain of this being that is pretending to be is simply an old man operating certain types of equipment. Now, of course, the equipment was made to look very advanced and understand the time in which the Wizard of Oz was shot, that equipment was advanced. So, Matrix OS is based on a system used by much darkness in the occult nature of history of this particular planetary system is because it's just recently coming out of its incubation phase. In addition to that, we must understand that if when the, when the planet gets itself to another level, when the planet actually awakes its kundalini, then all subsequent species on the planet will also awaken their kundalini. That is the common theory. Although a person can also awaken their kundalini on their own. So understand, the mission, as we call it, is still twofold, which is one, to ascend yourself and to get yourself on an ascendant level, and then two, assist your brothers and sister with, sisters with also getting them into ascension. And so what we're dealing with here in this matrix or this womb, there's a way that this operates. There's a way that this particular reality that we're in, this matrix, operates. And so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about matrix, OS.